Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And this is the second video in the on the topic of VSAM on VM370. If you remember in the previous video, uh, let's go find it here. Um, we'll have uh, Moshix channel and then our subscriber. And so in M93, this one. Early voting. Uh, uh, Professor René Ferland shows how to get vSAM clusters or data sets or databases, however you want to call them, defined on under VM370 and that by itself is a surprise because very few people knew, including myself actually, uh, that VSA, VM370, this venerable 50 year old, even more 55 year old operating system uh, is actually capable of creating, generating, reading and writing vSAM datasets, um, and um, and so in, in that in this video here, Professor Nefron, our guest speaker for this series on VM370 and DOS VS, explained how to uh, define, create, and delete uh, and maintain vSAM datasets. Uh, and now in this video today, uh, René Ferland is going to show how to uh, have uh, PL1 and COBOL programs read and write data, store data, and work with data on vSAM. Now, before we go to this topic of uh, COBOL and PL1, I just want to say that vSAM and the mainframe are kind of uh, concepts that go together. I said in my previous uh, video that, uh, in, in this video, in M93, I said at the very beginning that uh, just like in Unix, TCP IP, the C language, and Unix are kind of, uh, kind of the trinity that goes together. If you want to use this, use this religious analogy, uh, on the mainframe we have vSAM, COBOL, and the mainframe are also a, tri a trilogy, a trinity that go together. Uh, these three concepts are kind of bonded together. Now, vSAM itself didn't come out at the same time as the IBM uh, S360 architecture, which is still what we're dealing with in the mainframe world, in the modern mainframe world today. Um, so this is the, the the grandfather of everything. This is how the mainframe got started, the modern mainframe with the S360. When and the S360 was announced in 1964, so 54 years ago, uh, the vSAM um, uh, data set or the vSAM database or, or, um, or storage technology didn't exist yet. It was added in towards the, I think, 1972. So let's see here, wiki, vSAM. Okay, um, it was added, it doesn't really say here, but I think it was in the early 70s, like 72 or 73. That's when vSAM was released by IBM for the OS 370, um, for the, sorry, for the, uh, MVS or OSVS1 um, uh, operating system, and ever since then, vSAM has been has been a uh, a part of the mainframe that cannot be thought away from. So everything on the mainframe is based on vSAM, the DB2 database, uh, the IMS uh, databases. Everything that's that's stored in the mainframe in an organized way is going to be stored on vSAM. Now. Um, the, comp the other thing that we should mention is that co the compilers that we use on VM370, as well as on uh, MVS 3.8, uh, the free compilers that we can use are um, actually not MVS or VM370 compilers at all. Uh, they're actually called MVT compilers because they're part uh, here. They're part of the compilers that were delivered with the MVT operating system, which is the predecessor of the MVS operating system. And everything up to MVT was public domain and um, if you want to open source by IBM, and that's why we can use those compilers. So COBOL um, that we use on VM370 here and on uh, MVT and MVS 3.8, as well as the PL1 compiler, they're called, so you can see it also here, the um, MVT PL1F compiler. Those are compilers that precede the vSAM technology. As such, COBOL, as we have it on VM370 and MVS 3.8, as well as PL1, are not capable, do not know anything about vSAM. 
because they come before vSAM. They were created way before, 10 years before vSAM. And so um, the question is, how can we use, but most people who know COBOL today, most people, 99% of people, when you talk about COBOL in the mainframe, or when you talk about P1 in the mainframe, when they have to store some organized data, business data, or any other data uh, on the mainframe, they will, first of all, they will think about using vSAM. And so how can we use compilers that were created before the, um, the, the arrival of vSAM on the mainframe uh, for vSAM data? How is this possible? And so, of course, uh, this person here, Jay Mosley, um, knows about all that, of course. And so he created a, uh, Jay Mosley here, created an assembly program uh, which kind of uh, acts as a broker to read and write and access vSAM data sets. As you can see, this is exactly the one on uh, COBOL PL1 so that we, we are able to use ancient compilers that precede vSAM on the mainframe to read and write data on vSAM. And then in this video, my good friend in Montreal, René, is going to show how to uh, use this broker created by Jay Mosley on VEM370. We have been doing this for a while on MVS 3.8, but he's going to show us how to get this to work on VEM370. Over to you, René. Hello, everyone. This is René from Montreal, and this is my second video about VSAM on VM 370 And now in this video, I want to explain how we can access a VSAM dataset from a PL1 program or a COBOL program. So let me start first with PL1, the language I know the most. <clears throat> so I'm currently, as you can see, logged on the cloud system of Moshix. <clears throat> and I have uh, on this system, remember, I have created my mini disk formatted in OS format. And then I stored a catalog, a user space, and a cluster on it. Okay, so that's uh, remember that's my uh, <clears throat> 194 mini disk on F. If I list data set on F, you can see the catalog and the user space in which there is a VSAM cluster, a key sequence uh, VSAM cluster. And I'd like to, let's say, read and write and update this cluster from a PL1 program. That's what I would like to do. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this. I will clear this first. So <clears throat> in PL1, there is this uh, notion of uh, data transmission, which I guess rely, uh, relate to the idea of transmitting data from the program to some kind of device, whether a, a file on disk or a, a printer or something like that. And there are essentially two kinds of data transmission in PL1. There is stream-oriented data transmission and record-oriented transmission. Uh, typically, stream-oriented transmission is for card reader, punches, and printers, while record-oriented transmission is for data sets on DASDs, on disk. So I guess if we want to access a VSAM data set on disk, we have to look at record-oriented transmission. And now this record-oriented transmission will depend <clears throat> for a big part of the kind of data set organization we have, or more precisely, the kind of data set organization that is supported by the language and the compiler. So on a modern, uh, <clears throat> on a modern uh, PL1 or compile, PL1 compiler, the different type of organizations we can support it is typically consecutive, index, regional, TP, and VSAM. So a modern VPL1 compiler support VSAM and everything is fine. And if you want, say, to access a VSAM data set, how does this go? Let me show you with a small example here. This is a job on MVS, but it would be quite similar on VM anyway. You can see that first there is an allocation of the cluster uh, with ID cams, <clears throat> we would do that with AM serve on VM370, and then there's a call here to the compiler to compile link and go, and here's the uh, the program, and you can see that there is 
a declaration of a file, record, <coughs> sequential output, key, and environment vSAM. So that direct here will be a vSAM data set uh, that is declared directly in the program like that. And later on here, <coughs> you can see a write to this uh, direct file from a record using some key. And that's, so that's very easy to access the vSAM data set. You just declare it essentially and use the normal read and write instruction of PL1. But that's for a modern uh, PL1 compiler. The compiler we have on VM370 is the, essentially the MVT PL1F compiler. And on this uh, compiler, what is supported is consecutive index and regional. And I don't think, to be honest, I'm not sure, but I'm, I don't think it's possible to use regional and DEX data sets on VM370. It's certainly possible on MVS, but on VM370, I'm not sure. Consecutive is probably available, but for sure, VSAM is not available. So we cannot do, <coughs> we cannot access the, the VSAM data set the normal way with a simple defined file and a read and a write like we do for consecutive data sets. So what do we do? Well, somebody thought about that before us, for sure, and guess who? That's this uh, very amazing guy, Jay Mosley, I talked about <coughs> in the last video. So um, he wanted to use vSAM on MVS because the compiler is the same. <coughs> of course, it's not possible because the compiler does not support it. So what he did, essentially, he wrote an assembler routine, a moderate size assembler routine that will provide essentially all the services we need. So with that routine, that assembler routine, we can open a vSAM data set, close a vSAM data set, read from a vSAM data set or write to one just by calling this routine with the proper uh, parameters. Okay, <clears throat> so let me show you how it's gonna go on VM370, so I'm going to this. Here's an example. So I come here, sorry, type KSDS RAND PL1. Oh no, let me edit, it's going to be better. KSDS RAND PL1. Now this is a PL1 program that's going to use the VSAM IO routine, the, the assembler routine of J Mosley to read the KSDS cluster, so a key sequence uh, data set cluster, randomly adding, updating, deleting records. So that's exactly what we would like to do with a vSAM data set. Now, <clears throat> if I go a little bit further in the file, in the program, you can see here how it goes. You can see that there is a call to this vSAM IOP, uh, which is maybe I go a little bit down this way to highlight that. So this is the routine that's going to perform all the necessary operations with the vSAM data set. There are three parameters, a parameter block, a file block, and the record itself, of course. And this parameter block and file block are essentially two structures in the PL1. They are equivalent in COBOL2. And you just have to populate <coughs> the structure with the proper information to tell that routine what you want to do what kind of cluster it is, for example, a KSDS with direct access input output with the record length, as you can see here, and I want to open this uh, vSAM data set. So you just fill these things <coughs> with the proper information, and then you call the routine to perform the action. So there is a VS, v, VSIO open, VSIO close, VSIO read, VSIO write, and stuff like that. <coughs> and uh, that's how we can actually access the vSAM data set. It's a little bit uh, tedious because we have to fill the, the structure like that. <coughs> Sometimes some parameters need to be filled only once, some, some other need to be changed along the, the action we want to do. And it's a uh, it makes it's a long it's it's gonna give some code which is longer than a simple read or simple write, but it, it does the job. And anyway, you can always wrap this thing into a procedure if you want, just to call a read or just to call open or something like that, and all this uh, this stuff will be inside the the procedure and will make your 
final program easier to read maybe or something like that so <clears throat> that's the way it's gonna go but of course we need these uh, parameter block and file block here these are already defined in a copy book on copy books uh, <clears throat> that you have to make available to your program so uh, in this case you can see whoops sorry button you can see here there is an include vsamio vsamio fb so the first one is for the parameter block the second one for the file block and these are located uh, in a maclib on uh, vm370 so provided you include these two copy books defining the structure for the vsamio uh, routine uh, you're fine to access this routine or to call this routine, whatever. Of course, you need to know exactly what's in the copy book, so to understand a little bit the, the different fields and what you have to complete or populate to use the VSAM data set. But that's about it, you know. So, essentially, the program will include these two copy books, will include a definition of the record for the uh, VSAM data set, and then the instruction that's going to open the VSAM data set, perform any kind of actions on it, whatever, <clears throat> whatever you want to do with it. But then you have to close it. Apparently, it's important that you close it. You don't forget to close it at the end. And it's going to be fine. <clears throat> OK, so uh, where do we find these copy books? Well, <clears throat> and maybe that kind of program, so it's going to be easier for you to uh, to use so let me quit this oh no not yet quit let's see i have uh, <clears throat> now if we go to the site of uh, jay mosley there is a an archive for the visam io stuff and some test programs too these two archives are there but they are uh, designed to be uh, installed on mvs actually so uh, somebody else named Mike Noel took this, uh, these archives and all the stuff and ported it to uh, VM370 because he needed it for the Kix uh, software. So uh, essentially what I did, I just took the stuff of uh, Mike Noel. It's available in the file section of the Yahoo VM group anyway, and I just transfer it on this uh, on the cloud system of Mashix, and I assemble the routine and everything, and I copy also the uh, the test programs and everything, and I put that on uh, a mini disk of a special vi uh, virtual machine, the Visamio virtual machine. So if you want to use Visam datasets in a PL1 program, you need first to link to this. VSAM uh, IO virtual machine. So link VSAM IO. It's on Minidisc 191. Let's say I'm gonna put it here on 293 in read mode. Then I'm gonna access this, let's say on file mode E. Don't use uh, file mode B because the COBOL, uh, COBOL compiler use it, so there will be a conflict. Then let's say I look at VSAM IO uh, so e. Now you can see Visamio assemble, Visamio P assemble. These are the routines of J Mosley in Assembler. The Visamio Cobol, Visamio FB Cobol. These are the two copy books in Cobol. They are the same here in PL1. These were loaded into a Maclib Visamio P for PL1, Visamio C for, uh, for Cobol. And then you have also this text lib, which will contain the two modules. Here we're going to need for uh, at the load time when we want to execute the program. So I'm going to show you. So, so essentially now we have access to these uh, two Mac libs and the text lib here. And we can, we're ready essentially to uh, compile a program and run it. Now, uh, of course, <coughs> might be useful for us to see exactly how we can use the Visam IO routine you know exactly to have a, a more information and as I said I believe um, Jay Mosley wrote a bunch of test programs for the 
for the module DSAM-IO, as a matter of fact, and uh, <coughs> these test programs not only test the routine, but provide a lot of examples on how to use the routine as such. So I also uploaded the, the, whole, the whole thing on this uh, VSAM-IO virtual machine, so if I say zero COBOL E, you can see this bunch of programs on uh, ESDS, KSDS, RRDS. So these are the different kind of clusters. And you have here examples of all kinds on how to use the VSAM-IO routine in a COBOL program. And there's uh, the same thing for PL1. Uh, PL1 E. You can see the KSDS RAN, KSDS load, ESDS update, and everything like that. So all these programs will test the VSAM-IO routine, but if you look at, at them, you'll see a lot of examples of how to read and write and perform all kinds of operation on the three kinds of VSAM cluster that exist. So that's very useful. So I just took one of them, the KSDS RAND here, and I copy it on my A mini disk, and I will show you how to compile it and run it. Okay, using the test uh, KSDS cluster we defined in the last video. Okay, so first thing first, we need to compile the program. So I have this KSDS uh, RAND PL1 here. Okay, so I need to compile this guy produce a text file I'm gonna load afterwards so uh, but the, the, the program includes the two copy books so we must know where to find the copy books so, so I need first a global statement with a maclib uh, sorry maclib and then I will specify the, the, the maclib containing the two copy books for PL1 which is vsam IOP of course, for this to work, you have to have linked uh, the, uh, the mini disk of the SAMIO virtual machine. You can possibly, if you wish, if you don't wish to link this uh, mini disk all the time, you know, you can do it once, copy the MacLib, the two MacLib and the TextLib on your virtual machine. And after that, you won't need to, to link that uh, <coughs> particular mini disk to be able to use this uh, software. And once you have that, so when you have defined the maclib where to find the uh, the two copy books you can compile with pl1 and this is the program ksds rand of course we need to specify to pl1 there will be macro macros and i will print this thing like this i have a few diagnostics but these are not uh, proper um, Ah, yeah, uh, here's a problem. Okay, so <coughs> he's telling me that this is a too long name. I put it back this way, but okay, let's correct this anyway. So <coughs> purge uh, KSDS, I uh, know, purge reader all. Okay, so and this, this is the first time I thought I would put it the way it was on the J Moseley site, but now I know why I changed it because the name is too long. So let's change this. Let's uh, rename KSDS RAND PL1 as KSDS RMD. Uh, whoops. A KSDS RMD. Bang, bang. And then I'm going to edit KSDS RMD PL1. I'm going to change this here. Uh, sorry. Up, no down, change. RMD for RMD. Save and then button. Change RMD for file. <coughs> now let's try to compile this guy. RMD macro print. Okay, now I have only warnings and these are of no consequences. So my module is okay. 
If I look at the listing, I will see the, the stuff of the program itself. And then at the end, I should see the, the copy books. Because these are included only at the end of the program. I would have included in the beginning, personally, but here it is. So that's the uh, the copybook Visamayo. You can see the different fields here, and then you have the copybook Visamayo FB, and with the different uh, fields. Okay, so let's purge this. So now I have KSDSRMD. Okay, I have my PL1 program and the text file and now if I want to run this I need to load this into memory with the Visamayo routine okay and not only that I have also to uh, define the files the different files used by this program the program used three files the Visam dataset itself but also a sequential dataset <coughs> that contains the different uh, the transaction data set essentially that contains record and the action to do with the record and also uh, a printer file where it prints the, the result of the actions the program perform. So I have to <coughs> define these things before I can actually load the program so the first thing I have to do is to <coughs> do a global statement but not a mac lib this time a text lib i'm gonna use the pl1 lib because this is a pl1 program and also the visamayo text lib and after that i have to define the transaction file so this is a cms data set so i can use the file def command uh, the DD name is images and it refers to a file on disk. The name is images data. There is a printer file. Uh, <coughs> Jay Mosley used a record oriented uh, printing instead of streaming, uh, stream oriented printing. So we have to define the printer. File def printer. Printer. Now these two uh, images in printer, these are defined inside the program. If you look at the, the source, you're going to see them. And then I have to define my my uh, VSAM dataset, my cluster. Now this is a VSAM dataset, so I'm not using file def, but instead I'm going to use DLBL. Uh, then the DD name that J Mosley is using in the program is KSDSF01. And then this is located on Minidisk F. The name is test KSDS. And it's a VSAM data set. And normally I should be ready now to load my, <coughs> my program. I should find what it's needed to start this and maybe no mapping. So execution occurred, that's fine no error messages and it produced a print file which was stored in my uh, card reader so I can see it so let's take a look SF browse now you can see this is a program that's gonna read and update a key sequence data set now this is the keys this is the action that were done sometimes he didn't find the record sometimes he added he changed so you can see that he performed a bunch of operations on the on the VSAM data set without any problem <coughs> and uh, reported these actions on the on the printer so <coughs> that's how you do it for PL1 so if I say it again you have to let me type KSDS RAM you have to do the global MacLib then you compile your program with the macro, of course, the macro option. Then you do the global text lib with PL1 lib and Visamayo. You need to provide as many file def necessaries and DLBL necessaries 
that are called by your own program anyway, and then you load the text file. It's gonna find whatever necessary, whatever is missing, you know, the link in the in these two text lib. And when you're done, you can clear the file def and clear the DLBL if you want. And I have my own clean procedure just to get rid of all kinds of intermediate files and remove all that stuff. So global Mac lib and global text lib, then the file def, DLBL, and then you load and it should work. And if you look at the content of this program, KSDS uh, RND BL1, you're gonna see a bunch uh, of statements, you know. You can see here that is there's a, a loop on the transaction data set records. And given that, it's just calling the <coughs> reading and processing the the record of the transaction data set and then he closed the, the whole thing and will close the uh, the visam io <coughs> the visam uh, data set and the process procedure here just goes to uh, the different kind of action and calling another procedure to add or to change or to delete and these procedure themselves will call the, uh, right k write KS or read KS or update KS and finally these procedure write KS and read KS or daily KS and things like that they will call the low-level VSAM IOP assembler routine so this is very well written and gives it's very complete and you have examples for all kinds of uh, VSAM data sets so that that's very nice <clears throat> so with that you should be so if you just copy these PL1 programs on the mini disk you know you will have plenty of examples on how to do things and it should work normally so that's fine let me do HT over here now this is for PL1 what about now uh, COBOL well things are pretty much the same uh, I have an example here, edit uh, KSDSR COBOL. Now you can see that Jay Moseley is the one who wrote it. <coughs> That's fine. I throw my hat to this guy anyway. And <coughs> there is the copy books, I guess, here. You can see the copy books included. And then <coughs> the program is there and it calls the the routine Visam IO, that's not Visam IOP because Visam IOP is the wrapper for PL1. It's just called Visam IO using the parameter block, the, the file block and the record, and it does the same kind of, uh, of action. So, what we have to do is about the same that uh, we do with PL1. We have to compile using the copy books and then we have to load using the text lib where the uh, the routine is located but uh, unfortunately the uh, COBOL compiler is slightly different the implementation is slightly different from the PL1 compiler the PL1 compiler there is the MVT compiler as adapted by Waterloo University but the uh, COBOL compiler is uh, is a more is not the, adapted by Waterloo University so the global MacLib is not going to work with uh, the COBOL compiler, but uh, it's no problem. What we have to do is to define, to use a file def for the syslib and uh, specify the uh, the uh, copybook maclib def this way. So let me show you. Uh, so we have this KSDSR COBOL program. It's just going to read the, uh, the the cluster and print the the records. That's what. It's gonna do so. First of all, I have to do file def syslib, and then this is a file on disk. It's vsam ioc maclib e. Then I run the COBOL compiler on this guy. It works as you can see. It will uh, link. The mini disk 333 from the COBOL virtual machine to uh, the file mode B, so that's why you, you better not put the MacLib on file mode B. <coughs> uh, 
there will be a, I think there is a compile uh, a listing if I'm right KSDSR okay so there is a listing but there is no option so you just type COBOL and you're gonna get the listing you have to print uh, the listing manually afterwards and then we have to do the same as with uh, PL1 <clears throat> we have to define the text lib global text lib this will be not PL1 lib of course that's gonna be Cobb 360 R and Visam IO2 okay and then we have to define the uh, <clears throat> the different files of this program there are only two the Visam cluster itself and the uh, the logical system output because uh, the the records are printed with the display uh, display statement so it's going to be printed on the logical system output the sysout dd name so i have to do file def uh, sysout disk let's say ksdsr sysout let's say a3 for the final bit and then again the cluster uh, is it there? Maybe it's still there. Uh, yeah, the cluster is still there, as you can see. So we don't have to redefine it. KSDS F01 is still there. So <clears throat> we should be able to run the program now. So let's try to do this. KSDS R. Start a new map. Execution begins. And it's fine, no error messages. There's no print file sent to the card reader because the output is in the, K, the sysout data set. So, uh, no, KSDS R. You can see that there is a listing of the program. And now you have this sysout file. The length of the record is 121. So if I just uh, print this guy, maybe. And then SF Browse, you can see that he just read sequentially all the records and it's already fine and print them on Sysout, so that's fine. Okay, so that's the way to do it also. So just to uh, summarize, KSDSR exec, you just define the copybook with the syslib execute the compiler then you define the text lib all the uh, the files and the clusters you need and then you load your program and that should work okay and of course as you can see i just uh, included all these instruction in an exec so if you do that you just have to type the name of the exec and it's gonna execute everything and make it make your life easier i guess so that that's it okay so that that's how we do it if you are on the cloud system you can link the vsam io <coughs> mini disk 191 in read mode access it on whatever file mode you want except b apparently <coughs> and then you do uh, what <coughs> what i did you just have to use a global maclib at the right time and a global text lib what you really need from that disk is uh, that mini disk that visam IU mini disk is the the two maclib and the text lib you can copy them on the virtual machine if you want to have you want to use this uh, this thing at home you only need these uh, these three files so you can possibly download them from the the web not the web but from the cloud system and then upload them on your personal system and you'll be able to use normally the, the routine for uh, accessing the SAM data sets on VM370. So maybe before I leave, this is about what I wanted to say, but maybe <coughs> before I leave, I believe these uh, examples are very useful. Uh, the uh, COBOL example or PL1 example on the VSAM IO mini disk. So you might want to copy this into your own virtual machine on the cloud. No problem there. 
you might want to download them locally on your computer to print them and look at what's in there. You can also go to the to uh, J Moseley's site and try to download the whole thing from there if you wish. It might be more difficult because the the whole output is in the, uh, is in a job for uh, MVS an update uh, I update uh, job. But anyway. I'm sure you can do something with that. So I would recommend to read these programs <coughs> to know how to do stuff with the Visamayo routine. That's what I did anyway. Uh, maybe you'll run into some problem. However, <coughs> if you are uh, on a system at home, because uh, well, maybe I do this. Okay. Uh, because I have installed, as you as you know, I have installed. On this cloud machine, the Diagnose 58 software and the MECAF software that provides uh, full screen support. Well, this is not available on this, the 6 pack 1 2, so you will have to install that. And also, that MECAF uh, software that provides the uh, full screen editor also provides the Indie file uh, software to transfer files. So if you take just a plain six pack one two you won't have the the program to transfer files <clears throat> so you need to install this stuff uh, maybe I can do a video about it at some point I know that the uh, the six pack one three beta that's available from the G4U GM website I talk about uh, in a previous video I know that this system as the Diagnose 58 and the MECAF software install, but I just checked and apparently the, uh, the PL1 compiler and the COBOL compiler are not working very well on that system. So uh, I thought I could get away, I could, you could get away uh, faster without having to install this stuff, but maybe uh, it, it will be necessary to, to install the stuff. But now you just need that if you want to use a full screen editor and if you want to uh, transfer the files with indie file but there are different ways to transfer the file on vm3 uh, vm370 without indie files uh, uh, binary files no problem so uh, i have faced that problem in the past and i i know how to to work around so i transfer files on vm370 way before indie files were available so <coughs> I may want to show you this at some point, it's not very difficult. Uh, so, so I will stop right here. Uh, maybe you can try again uh, to work with VSAM datasets on the cloud system. That's, that could be a start, uh, a good place to start. And after that, if you want to uh, perform these actions on the on your own system, uh, well, <coughs> let's see what kind of problems we're going to have that. And, there at that moment and maybe I'm gonna do another video to help you with that. So I'll stop here and give back the word to... Thank you Rene. Uh, this was uh, to me very very interesting. I'm sure also the community in the in the main, in the Moshe Explained Film channel are gonna appreciate your uh, considerable uh, uh, teacher or teaching skills here uh, to get to show us how to get this to work. I see that you're actually, by the way, logged in right now. Um, why don't I send you a short message? Message, farewell. Thanks for the for the great VSAM video. VSAM two video. You on video right now. Okay, so we just send them this message. Hopefully, it will reply. Um, so I actually followed all the steps. I am able to do what uh, Rene did here in this video. Um, so I know those steps are correct, and I encourage everybody to try. What he also mentioned is that uh, you can, of course, use the Moshix uh, mainframe in the cloud to uh, to recreate all the steps and or down, of course download your own uh, version of VM370 and get it to run on your own system. Of course, all of that uh, is fun. And as everything here that we do with the with the vintage uh, mainframe operating systems, um, 
in our channel it's not really so much the end result that's fun oh <laughs> uh, yeah he just answered me that he just uh, sent me another video message for long. yes I saw it working on editing your visa to video right now and recording it for posterity um, so as as I was just saying most of the fun with this mainframe stuff it's not really so much the result since I, I doubt that anybody here is running production on 55 year old operating systems but it, it's the it's the way it's getting there it's doing the steps and so it's it's the path that leads to um, enlightenment enlightenment and uh, and fun and joy and not so much the end result and of course uh, Rene uh, is uh, is helping us a lot with that and uh, the the uh, the uh, the feedback and the results on the Moshix mainframe channel about the videos you've been making Rene are just uh, are just are just outstanding and awesome so thank you again Rene thank you again for the whole community if you like this particular uh, oh here it is thanks I'm honored to be part of your channel oh he's just the sweetest man thank you Rene and uh, he's gonna be surprised this is gonna end up on the video that's gonna be released on the on the on the channel but if you like this particular video and all the work that Renee put in this video please do press on the thumbs up uh, button uh, if you haven't subscribed to the Moshix mainframe frame channel yet please do subscribe now and we'll see you for the next videos thank you goodbye